Hello, I'm Thomas Jefferson. I was born in Shadwell, Virginia, 1743. My e April 2nd, but today it's April 13th. I have many siblings, two older sisters, four younger sisters, and one younger brother. I have I have a love for violin. When my my father er, owned many slaves, and when he died, I uh, I was heartbroken because he was my hero, and not just as that, as the oldest boy, I owned all the slaves. I was. Interested in politics and soon joined Congress. After Patrick Henry made a famous speech, give me liberty or give me death, and thought Britain would leave America alone, just the op opposite. It started a war. During the war, I wrote oh, the Declaration of Independence. Then after the war, I went into France and had a slave bring in Patsy, my daughter, to France. I fell in love with if a slave, Sally Hemings, and had children, but however, I didn't marry because my last wife, Maria, uh, asked to promise if I, I could never remarry again, and, pro and I promised. So we didn't marry. Later in my life, I became a, pr I became president, and tried to, to end slavery, but it never worked. When, I, and I died. Sal Ellie and her kids would be free. I died July fourth, eighteen twenty six, and that's the day, a I wrote a declaration. Hi, my name is Daniel Boone. Later on in the story, you're going to see how I rescued my daughter from kidnappers and, 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 how, I led and how I hated being indoors and how I led pioneers out, out, west, out west and, people, and why people call me the Great Pathfinder. I was born on October 22, 1734. When I was, when I was born, there was no United States. Instead, there were 13, colon there were 13 colonies. They belong to India. I mean, England. The colony that I lived in was Pennsylvania. Often we were Quakers. That meant that meant, that meant we, we were peaceful and we didn't believe in war. Now I'm going to talk about my childhood. Childhood. Rolling green, green hills, green valleys, and a rich black horse is a perfect place for a boy like me to grow up. I did and would do almost everything to to avoid being cooped up in my family log cabin. When I was five, smallpox caught the area. It was a deadly disease, but if you get it once, you can't get it again. Me and my sister went out of bed. We headed straight to the house of a little boy who who had some, had had smallpox. To make sure we w went got sick, we we crawled it back into bed. Luckily, we survived. When I was five, when I was, when, oh. At the age of five, I was really hard and tough. I could cut down a tree, I could t cut down a tree with an ax as big as me. Did I mention my mom's name is Sarah and my dad's name is Cole? My dad punished me with a beating. He would strike me with a beating he, he tricked me with a rod, beating the rod until I asked for forgiveness, but I never asked for forgiveness. In 1774, I was 10 years old. My dad bought me, my dad bought me a big grassy field six miles from my home. My cows would graze there. When I was in garden, guarding the herd of cows, I went hunting for small animals using. Sp Using, 
using spears made out of wood and stone. Indians, especially the de <laughs> Indians, especially the Delaware, uh, ho helped the Quakers by teaching them how to trap and track. At the age of 13, my dad bought me a long rifle. With such power in my hand, I could take down a larger game like wild turkey and deer. At the age of 14, I learned how to read and write repair tools, repair tools and weapons. I even knew enough carpentry to build a house. Once I was hunting, nothing seemed to distract me. By nightfall, I didn't come back. My mom might got worried. There were too many people in Pennsylvania. Um, that was bad for land, so we moved to Virginia. Someone claimed that I could take, I, I could take off a bit. A, I could shoot a tick off a bear's nose. I was a fa did I mention I was a favorite sh sharp shooter? I could beat everybody find my, my, my rifle with one hand. The, the war broke out, the war broke out in 1774. I was, it was known as the French and in, in Indian War. The British won the war. At the age of 21, I joined the British Army. During war, people were dropping like leaves in order. After the war, I was 21. I, I married a girl named Rebecca. We had 10 children. I, I, I went to a, I went, I went to a, I went to a journey. I built a shelter with three sides and an opening at, a, at the front. In 1760, we moved, I mean, I went on a journey to North Carolina. We moved, we moved back from Virginia from North Carolina. Wait. Then I went to a journey. Wade's friend Rebecca. I, then I went on a journey to get a lot of, lot of meat, to, to get a lot of food. I got lost in the place we now call Florida. I had to be rescued by Indians. My friend told me at the Great Boys Pass. In 1769, me and other four men sent out my horses to go to the Great Boys Pass. Surely enough, we found, we found the Great Boys Pass. There were groups for hunting. The group was so I headed off with John to shoot shoot many deer, elk, bear, and wild turkey. We signed a treaty. We signed a treaty. Did I mention we signed a treaty? We we would not move beyond the Abraham Mountains. We, but we broke the pines of Shiree. Me and John were held captive captive for seven days. We got what we one cold night and we he checked his beaver racks. He put. He never came back. He never came back. He'd probably been killed by Indians. So, so we soon we, uh, so, so I went back with the, with the two other people. So we soon we would we would run out of food. We sent a group to get to get food and supplies. There was. We, we was, they were stealing Indian land. No one was shown. James got shot and stabbed to death. Only two men escaped. They snuck back to me and the others. I have grief stricken when I hold the decision. They, they, la la uh, they carried the wind with the road. I saved, I saved my daughter, so my Gemma, from kidnappers. We were... We were running out of with, 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 we were running out of food and salt, but without food, food the salt would go bad. Once I was once I was hunting for the I was hunting for the people, I was hunting for the people. I was I was caught by Shireen. They picked up all the hair of mine and washed me in the river to make me look just like a Shireen warrior. There were continuous shooting from both sides. I was I was not found guilty. I traveled back to Kentucky to reunite with family. In 1783, the American Revolution ended. The colonists won. A new nation was born, the United States of America. Indian War. The Indian War also ended. I made a coffin and I slept and I slept in it. On September 26, 1820, I I was dead. I I was I. I, 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 85, when I was 80, I, when I was 85 years old, my last word, I'm going, my time has come. If I'd still be alive, I'd be 287 years young, if I'd still be alive.
Hello. Farmer is sometimes hard. Oh. Hello. My name is... Oh, wait. Hello. My name is Cesar Chavez, or better pronounced Cesar Chavez. My full name is Cesario Estrada Chavez. I was born 1927, March 21st. I, I live... Um, I was born, wait, wait. I, I live in the Arizona desert and my family started a ranch. I have five siblings. Me and my brother were in farming schools for my dad, Librado. And then there was the Great Depression. During the Depression, people had trouble finding work. When I was six, I could go to school. My teacher said I could not sit next to my sister. I begged her to let me sit next to her. He finally gave in and let me sit next to her. After a few days, I was ready to sit next to my other classmates. I didn't really like school because my classmates made fun of me. In 1938, because of a drought, m my family had to move to California. Because California didn't have a drought. We found work at a bean farm. I went to school only half the day. On the farm, we didn't get paid as much as others. Breathing was dangerous. We often breathed pesticides, a poisonous chemical sprayed on plants to kill bugs. In 1948, I walked into a store and I saw a girl named Helen Fadela. We started dating and then I married her. In 1952, I signed up for a group called CSO, or Community Service Organization. In 1959, CSO realized I was a great leader. I also had eight children at the time. In 1962, I wanted to start a union, so I resigned from CSO. Dolores Huerta, someone I met from CSO, helped me with the union. In 1962, I called my union NFWA, or National Farm Workers Association. Another union called AWOC, or Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee, was planning a strike against grape growers and joined NFWA. And a strike is when you ask people not to go to work for a period of time. In 1965, we caused the strike. In 1966, NFWA and AWOC started marching to Sacramento. NFWA joined AWOC to make UFWOC, or United Farm Workers Organizing Committee. In 1968, I fasted, and fasting is when you don't eat for a period of time. Then 25 days later, I stopped fasting. Then I gave a speech. I called for a great boycott, and a boycott is when you ask people not to buy it. So if there's a great boycott, that means you don't buy the grapes. In 1970, the grape, um, grape growers lost millions of dollars from the boycott. Then the boycott was over. I called for a lettuce boycott. In 1970, I was arrested for ignoring a law and got released right before Christmas. In 1975, the new governor, Jerry Brown, was also interested in the rights of farm workers. In 1988, I fasted and kept giving speeches about the troubles of farm workers. One day in 1993, I went to bed and died in my sleep because of the fast. Cesar Chavez Day is celebrated on March 31st, my birthday. We want to vote. Votes for women. We want to vote. Votes for women. Hello, my name is Susan Brownell Anthony. I was a teacher, speaker around the country, and I fought for women's rights. I was born on February 15th, 1820 in Adams, Massachusetts. I have four sisters and two brothers. I'm from a Quaker family. The Quakers are a, are a religious group that believe in education and that men and women should have equal rights. I learned to read and write when I was three years old. I attended a local school, then a school set up by my father, then a, a boarding school near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
I spent my adult life in Rochester, New York, working with a group of activists and worked on temperance, which is the fight against making and drinking alcohol, abolition, which is the fight against slavery, and women's suffrage, which is women's right to vote. I was arrested in 1872 for voting in a presidential election and went to trial. This was an important step in the right for women's political rights. At the time, women, most women were uneducated, couldn't own property, and had few legal rights. I was the president of the National Women's Suffrage Association. I appeared in front of every Congress to fight for women's rights for more than 35 years until 1906, the year I died. Women were finally given the right to vote 14 years after I died. In 1972, to celebrate all I did in life, I was the first woman to be on a U.S. coin. It was called the Anthony Dollar. Hi, I'm Ferdinand Magellan, the first person to sail around the globe. The start to my amazing voyage was Tuesday, September 20th, 1519. My five ships left from a port called San Lucar de Barrameda. 17-year-old King Charles sent me to find a faster route to trade spices with Asia. I discovered that the earth was round. After my voyage, a new age of exploration began. Maps are now more accurate and globes are now more useful. I died halfway through the voyage. I never completed my journey, but I still earned a place in history. Oh, hi. My name is Leonardo da Vinci. I was a famous artist. I was best known for painting the Mona Lisa. I was also an inventor, musician, engineer, and scientist. As well as painting, I made the first robotic man. I was born on April 15, 1452. My father was ashamed of me and left. My mother cared for me about two years before giving me to my grandparents. No one loved me. Only my uncle Francesco showed interest in me. He took long walks in the hills. I would go with him. I grew to love the natural world. Everywhere I went, I took my notebook. I made, drawing, I made drawings about anything I was interested in. When I was young, I had amazing talent for drawing. My father never married my mother, so I could never attend school, nor get a real job. But I could become an artist. I began getting lessons from a famous artist named Verkaho. Not only did I work for Verkaho, but I lived with him too. I was 12 then. In Verkaho's studio, no girls were allowed. It was in a, I was in appearance. We practiced for seven or eight years before we knew how to paint pictures and create frescoes. I stayed at the studio for 13 years. I learned to read and write and a little math, but I wanted to learn more. I started to buy and read books. I did this in my entire life. Before I did a painting, I drew what I wanted to paint over and over until everything was perfect. I enjoyed that part more than painting, so I didn't always finish. In 1478, I left Florence because there was too much fighting in the city. I moved to Milan and got hired by the Duke to do many jobs. That includes making a giant horse statue, which I never finished, and, the last, and painting the last supper on, on the wall where the Duke planned to be buried. Everywhere I went, I took my notebooks. I started notebooking in Milan. The notebooks were full of drawings and ideas. I filled them for more than 30 years. In all my notebooks, I wrote backwards. This is mirror writing. You will have to hold it up to a mirror to read it. In 1505, a silk merchant wanted a painting of his wife. I myself took the job. I finished the painting many years later. It is known as the Mona Lisa. I moved to France later and lived with King Francis I. I was given a home, a tunnel connected mine and the king's. On May 2nd, 1519, I died.
Hello, my name is George Washington Carver, a famous scientist. I grew up in foster care. I help my foster mother's friends with their flowers. I have always loved plants and nature. I studied botany and became fa a famous scientist. My real parents were slaves and they were killed when I was a baby. The Carvers raised me in foster care. Even after the slaves were freed, I wasn't very strong. I had to help the fa on the, with the farm. I helped with the plants and animals. I moved around a lot and lived with lots of different people so I could go to school. I learned lots of, di of, lots of stuff I wanted to learn more. It was hard for me to to get into some schools because of my skin color. I wasn't I wasn't the first I was the first black person to graduate from Iowa State College and teach there. October 1896 I went to Atlanta, Georgia. I taught farming at the Tuskegee Institute. I was in charge of the Department of Ag Agriculture. I taught farmers to rotate crops to and improve their soil. I introduced sweet potatoes and peanuts and ideas to make things out of them. In 1916, I wrote a book called called How to Grow Pe the Peanut and 105 Ways of Preparing It for Human com Consumption. This made me famous. I was invited to Congress to speak about peanuts. They were even they even made a museum for me. The end. And um, um one other thing I had in this. I said start where you are with what you have, make something out of it never be satisfied and never be be satisfied hi i'm albert einstein and well i was really poor i was chubby and pale with thick black hair i was really shy and my parents worried that there was something wrong with me so they sent me to a doctor and said i don't talk but they found nothing wrong and so I didn't speak until I was three or four. My parents continued to worry about me and later took me to more doctors. But they found, but the doctors found nothing wrong. I was fascinated by, the, uh, by electricity because it was powerful, invisible, mysterious, and dangerous. I was a mathematical genius. I enjoyed studying about other scientists' theories. My first published newspaper was about electricity and magnetism. I'm an inventor and a scientist. In one year, I published five groundbreaking newspapers about physics. In 1905, I published a paper about relativity. I, be I became a popular professor and spoke all over Europe. I liked to wonder about a world beyond the one that could be seen and explained. I said imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. I was also fascinated by the compass my uncle gave me. No matter what I did with the compass, it always pointed in the same direction, north. I had a lot of theories that later were proved to be true. Light bends as it travels through space. One of the most influ I was one of the most influential scientists of the 20th century. My work still helps astronomers study today. In 1920-22, I won a Nobel Prize about the full electrical effect, 
which led to the invention of the TV. I lived mostly in Switzerland and Germany. Hitler wanted me dead and said I was a spy seizing everything I owned. I moved to the U.S. and became a professor. I always wanted peace in the world. The last letter I wrote urged all nations to give up nuclear weapons. On December 5, 1901, Walter Edis Disney was born in an upstairs bedroom of a two-story cottage on North Troop Avenue in Chicago. My father, Edis, had built the house himself. My mother, Flora, was trained as a teacher, but she gave up a career to raise her five children. I always wanted to entertain people. My family's next move was to Kansas City, where my father ran a newspaper route for the Kansas City Times. Me and my brother worked at a comedy act, but it must have been pretty bad. When we tried our, our act at a theater, we got kicked off the stage. To support myself, I applied for a job with the post office. While I was working at the post office, two of my brothers, Herbert and Roy, were serving in the Army. In Kansas City, I teamed up with another artist. He had a very unusual name, UB Lurks. Yubi was shy and really serious. Yubi was also very, very talented. Together we started a company. At first we made art for signs and ads. Then we tried to make animation films we call cartoons. One of the films we made um, is Alice's Wonderland, but we did not make enough money, so we went bankrupt. Soon I moved to Hollywood, because Hollywood makes a lot of movies and films. I started a new business um, with my brother, Roy. We named it Walt Disney Studios. Lil and my wife helped create Mickey Mouse. Can you guess what Mickey Mouse's first name was? It was Monitor. I also created Donald Duck. I, was al I always had ups and downs. I also made Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, a full-length movie. Until, the cur from, until then, cartoons were really short. From that, I made a lot of money. I also made two successful movies like Fantasia and Bambi. Fun fact, over um, 250,000 drawings for Snow White. Also, Snow White opened on December 20, 21, 1937 in Los Angeles. I'm also the creator of Disneyland, the most fun place um, in the world. It has lots of rides, which... Um, and lots of cotton candy, which is the tastiest and sugariest. I hope you love Disneyland, too. I made Disneyland because it made kids laugh, and they have a lot of fun. I, pull, I hope all of the kids have a lot of fun. And I inspired other writers to write about castles. They took, um, I, I took my whole entire family on a cruise to British Columbia. I wasn't feeling well, but I enjoyed being with my grandchildren. Until 1965, however, people did not know that smoking caused cancer. The next day, December 15th, 1966, I died. I was 66 years old when I died. Hi, I'm Amelia Earhart, and I was a pilot, fashion designer, pioneer in flight, writer, speaker, woman's right advocate, and world record breaker. I was born on July 24, 1987 in Atchison, Kansas, in Atchison, Kansas. My house was on a high hill. It had 11 rooms with maids and a cook. Dinner was served on fine china. In 1904, when I was seven, my family took me to the World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. When I got home, I built a roller coaster like the one I saw at the fair. I went down it and crashed. I was okay. Me and my friends fixed the track, and I got right back on. In the winter, me and my sister went sledding, and me and my sister went sledding. I wanted to go fast, so I ran and jumped on my sled. Whoosh! I went. I was going so fast. Then a horse and carriage went right into my path. I ducked and I went um, under the horse. 
Before eighth grade, in the summer, I went to another fair where I saw my first airplane. Fall 1916, I boarded a train heading to Agantes School in Pennsylvania. I didn't mind that I was going away from home. I was going on a new adventure. In, in school, I was good at many different sports. In my second year, I was vice president of my class. While I was at school, World War I started. In 1917, I went to see my mom and sister in Toronto, Canada. Um, there I saw hurt soldiers from the war. I wanted to help so I didn't go back to school. I learned how to be a nurse's aide. I worked at the hospital in Toronto till war was over. Then I went back to the United States. I knew I wanted a career, I just didn't know what I was going to be. On Christmas, on Christmas 1920, when I was 23, me and my dad went to an air show. It was amazing. At that moment, I knew I had to take flying lessons and become a pilot. A woman pilot named Netta Snook gave me flying lessons for $1 a minute which was a lot of money in 1921. But I loved flying and I was good at it. Less than a year later, I passed my pilot's license test. When Netta got married, I found a new teacher, Monty Montijo. He was in the army and taught me some tricks. After that, I was going to see if I could go very high. I wanted to see, I wanted to set the record. It took two tries. I nearly crashed, but got the record. The record I wanted, the next record I wanted to set was to be the first ever woman to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, a man flew the plane, not me. I still got my record. June 18th, 1928, I got really famous for my record setting flight. I was shy and didn't like the attention, but I knew I had to have it if my dream as being a career pilot would come true. After that, I started doing more, um, doing more, um, doing more races and setting more records. I also helped start a club for women pilots only called the 99s. In 1932, I became the first woman to cross the Atlantic alone. More people listened to me, and I became more active in politics. I joined the National Women's Party and worked for women's rights. I also decide, designed women's clothing as a fashion designer, but I still would always fly as a pilot. Next, I decided I was going to fly around the world. I hired a man named Fred Noonan to help me navigate. On May 1st, 1937, we left Oakland, California on our way around the world. We flew 20,000 miles in three weeks. On July 1st, I was in New, Gu New Guinea and only had three stops to go before finishing our trip. On July 2nd, me and Fred took off from New Guinea. It, was, it would take 19 hours to fly to Howland Island, and it was hard to spot it. We never made it. A rescue mission started right away with 10 ships and 65 airplanes. We were never found. People are still looking for my plane today. Oh, hello there. Hi, my name is J.K. Rowling. Do you know what a muggle is? Do you know how to get to platform nine and three-fourths? Do you have a favorite Betty Bot's Every Flavor Bean? I made those. 
I was born at Yate General Hospital on July 31st, 1965, Gloucester, England. Two years later, I had a baby sister. When I was nine, my family moved to a little village named Tutchill. Tutchill sits on the bank of the River Wye. My mother was a lab technician. My father worked at an aircraft engine plane. I loved living in the country. Living in the country was a dream come true. When I moved, my teacher, Miss Morgan, was very strict. She seated all of the children according to how smart they were. The smart kids sat on the left. The dumb kids sat on the right. I sat on the dumb side. One day I left my school and went to Widen Comprehension School. One day at my new school, one of the toughest girls picked a fight with me. I became famous for standing up to her. One day my mom got very sick. My mother had multiple sclerosis or MS. There's no cure for MS. It damaged my mother's nerves. Mom got weaker every day. When I was feeling sad, I had one friend that would always cheer me up. His name was Sean, and he was my inspiration for Ron Weasley. And he was the first one of my friends to have a driver's license. Yes, it's true. One day I discovered a new favorite writer, Jane Austen. Jane Austen was my favorite author. She was writing books almost 200 years before I wrote Harry Potter. My teacher, John Nettleship, was also very strict. He was the inspiration for Snape. M Mr. Nettleship was strict. He had long, lanky black hair and a sharp tongue. His chemistry class was full of bangs and smells. It was, and it was far from my favorite. In my last year, I got chosen to be head girl. It was the highest honor a student could have. The head boy and girl represented the school at events, sometimes making speeches. When teachers were called out of the classroom, we were in charge. In 1983, I left Wyden and attended the University of Exeter. My favorite subject was English literature, but I studied French instead. I spent a year at Paris as a teaching assistant. In 1987, after I graduated, I moved to Clapham, a neighborhood in South London. For a while, I worked as a secretary for Amest International, which fights for the fair treatment of people. At lunch, I enjoyed making stories. Now, instead of telling stories to my friends, I wrote them down. The ones I made for adults, I never finished. My mother wasn't getting any better. I decided to move to Manchester in northern England. On the weekend, I took the train to look at flats, which are small apartments. One long, boring train ride, I suddenly thought of a boy. He had round glasses and a scar shaped like a lightning bolt. His name was Harry Potter. Not long after I came up with Harry Potter, my mother died. Even though Bob had been sick for a long time, I never thought she was going to die. I hoped living in another country would make me feel better. So I moved to Porto, Portugal, and took a job teaching English. While in Portugal, I met a journalist named George Andres and got married. In 1992, the next year, I had a girl named uh, Jessica. I got divorced in 1993 and moved. I moved to Edinburgh where my sister was living with her husband. When in shops or cafes, I wrote as much and as fast as I could. I finally finished Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I sent it, I, I, I shared it with my sister. Seven years after Harry Potter was invented, it was time to show it to the world. I sent it to an agent. 
One day, my future agent picked up my book out of the slush pile, and eventually he wrote me back that he was eager to sell it. There were a bunch of publishers that wanted it, so they had an auction for the rights of the book. My agent first said the price was up to $10,000. Then he called two hours later, and he said the final price was it was going to sell for over a hundred thousand dollars. In June 1997, Harry Potter and the Phil Officer's Stone was published. They asked me if I could use my initials. That's why it's called J.K. Rowling, even though my real name is Joe. My second book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, was published in 1998. In America, they changed the name of the first book to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone instead of Harry Potter and the Phil Officer's Stone. For American kids, cello tape was turned into scotch tape, car park was turned into parking lot, and ba and po instead of pocket of crisps, they turned it into bag of chips. In 1998, I went to America and read my stories to children. So many people had bought my book over the internet because they couldn't wait to read it. When I made my third book, even adults were reading it. In 2001, I bought a 19th century mansion on the banks of the River Tay, and I had published four books at the time, and Harry Potter was, believe it or not, one of the most challenged books of the century. Challenged is when an adult or a group of people ask it to be banned from a library or a school. Finally, Warner Studios turned it into a movie. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone premiered in November 2021. The movie was a big hit. In the end of 2021, I got married to Neil Murray in the library. There were 15 guests. I had three bridesmaids. My family was growing fast. In 2023, I gave birth to David Gordon Rowling Murray. Two years later, I had Mackenzie Jean Rowling Murray. We also owned a 17th century mansion in Endenburg. It was guarded by high fences, electric gates, and closed circuit televisions, and with a bodyguard from the British Special Air Service train to protect our family. I was the second highest female entertainer in the whole world. I had over a billion dollars. The Sunday Times listed me as the 122nd richest person in Britain. That put me 11 places ahead of the Queen of England. On January 11th, 2007, in the Balmoral Hotel, I finished the last book. On a vase, I wrote J.K. Rowling, finished writing Harry Potter in this room on July 2007. In 2011, I made Harry, I mean, Pottermore. It was an online reading experience where you could get sorted into one of the four houses, get a magic wand, and then get a pet. So I worked hard, and eventually I made the world a better place. Hello, I am Jane Goodall. I was born in London, England on April 3rd, 1934. As a young girl, I uh, was always fascinated by animals. At age 23, I traveled to Kenya, Africa to visit an, an old friend and had a wish to stay, but I'd need to find a good job. I found a job working as secretary for Louis Leakey, head of National Museum of Kenya. In 1960, Lewis sent me to Gombe Stream Game Reserve to observe chimpanzees in the wild African forest. He believed that observing chimpanzees' um, behavior would help us understand how the first humans acted. 
I spent many months observing, but needed to get closer uh, to the chimpanzees. Finally, a chimp I named David Greybeard took a banana from my hands. If David hadn't been there, I would have never been accepted by the other members of his group. One day, I discovered something uh, extraordinary. While I watched the chimps uh, that day, I noticed uh, they were eating something, but it wasn't fruit. That something was a dead piglet. This day's research proved that uh, chimpanzees are omnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat meat and plants. Another special day was another incredible discovery. One morning, I saw David Greybeard stick a long blade of grass into a termite mound. That's uh, uh, when I proved that chimpanzees uh, use tools too, not just humans. When scientists heard this uh, discovery, uh, it changed uh, the way uh, they thought of chimpanzees. Because of this discovery, the National Geographic Society funded my uh, studies for uh, many years. In 1986, I attended a conference in Chicago where I heard stories about chimpanzees being hunted and saw photos of chimps in tiny caves. Hmm. This is when I decided to commit to conservation and education. I met with presidents, government officials, and uh, conservation organizations to convince them to protect chimpanzees. I went to laboratories and spoke to scientists about current conditions. For example, I handed an imprisoned chimp a bit of apple, but the um, animal wouldn't take it. The scientists needed to know that chimpanzees are social animals. I wrote many books, including my autobiography, In the Shadow of Man, spoke to the public about what I learned, and told them how to protect chimpanzees. Every individual matters, every individual makes a difference, and every individual has a role to play. I am Helen Keller. When I was two years old, I became very sick and that's how I became deaf and blind. But I learned how to read and write. I even wrote about my life. I'm excited to tell you more about my life. When I was about six years old, my mom found me teaching named Annie Sullivan, and she was the center of my life for about 50 years. I had many temper tantrums because I did not understand what she was doing when she spelled words in my hand. She spelled water in my hands one day, then I finally realized what she was doing. The way this happened is she went outside to the, we went outside to the hand pup and she handed me a mug. I dropped it and then she made me pick it up. Then she wrote water in my hands. Then that day, I finally realized what she was doing. I wrote back water several times and then put the mug under the faucet and she pumped out water for me. With Annie's help, I was able to talk to my family. The way Annie helped me is she spelled the words in my hand that my family was trying to say to me. Newspaper stories ran about my progress. Once I reached President Grover Cleveland, he wanted to meet me, so I was invited to the White House. When I got to Perkins, a school for the blind, students looked up to me for what I was able to learn. I even got to speak in the Perkins graduation. I had a break from learning and went to Cape Cod. After my break, I went back to Perkins to learn much more and sent a letter to a famous writer and, put, and he put it in a magazine. Then that's when I learned how to, when, that's when I took my writing more seriously. Then that's when I also learned how to speak by touching my teacher's mouth. And he found a school for me, but I was not my family was not able to pay for it. I found a rich person who was willing to pay for my schoolings. I was determined to be the first 
deaf and blind women to complete college. I knew where I was going to do my college years, Radcliffe. Radcliffe was the number one school for women. I went to a preparing school for Radcliffe. I worked day and night so I wouldn't fall behind. I felt tired day long. I finished with good grades and was going to go to Radcliffe. I started to write stories about my life. An editor heard about my stories and asked to publish them and offered $3,000. I graduated Radcliffe and wrote a book called The World I Live In. It was about how I used my senses of taste, touch, and smell to make up for my two missing ones. Me and Annie acted in a play called The Miracle. It was when that day I finally realized what Annie was doing when she spelled words in my hand. Annie Sullivan died in 1936. After World War II ended, I traveled around the world and met with flying soldiers and gave them hope. I died on June 1st, 6, 60. I died on night in June 1st, 1968. I was 88 when I died. Hi, I am Harry Houdini. I am an escape artist. I could break out of everything, like handcuffs, jail cells, straitjackets, chains, padlocked boxes, and iron cages. I was born on March 24, 1874 in Budapest, Hungary. My real name is Eric Weiss. I always said my birthday was on April 6 because that is what my mother told me. When I was 16, I came across a book about Robert Houdin. It was the autobiography of a very famous magician. It was full of fantastic stories. I was hooked. If Robert Houdin could become so famous through magic, then I could too, but I need a catchy stage name. My family called me Uri, which is short for Eric. That sounded like Harry, and Houdin was a name that already made people think of magic. So I added an I to the end, and then I was born. When I was 12, I stood on the platform of a train station. I was going to Texas. Somehow, I ended in Kansas City, Missouri. I would return home when I had some money. In 1902, I was challenged by William Hodgson in England. It took me one hour to escape from his handcuffs, and it took him five years to make them. The first time I performed the vanishing elephant trick was on January 1, 1918. I made an elephant disappear into a box. I raised money for the families of American soldiers killed in World War I, and I trained soldiers. I am important because I surprised people and people, people learned stuff from me. I was recognized around the world. My name is Sally Wright, and I was, I was the first American woman to go to space. I was born on May 23, 1951, in Enico, California. I have, I have a younger sister named Karen. When I was growing up, I, I loved sports. Tennis was, tennis was my favorite sport. At first, I wanted to be a, prof a professional tennis player, but soon I realized I would never be a world-class champion. So then I went to college to study astrophysics. One day in 1977, when I was toward, toward my fourth degree in physics, I looked at the job ad in the newspaper. The US space program was looking for new astronauts. I applied because for the first time ever, they were letting women apply. January 1978, an official at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, called me to see if I wanted the job. I said yes. 
NASA needed astronauts who were scientists, doctors, and engineers. That's why NASA was interviewing people from all over the country, including women. Was including women in the space program was a big step for the women's rights movement. My job interview took a whole week. NASA told me training would take several years, and there was no guarantee that I would would go to, into space. Months later, in January 1978, NASA called to tell me I was picked to be one of the 35 new astronauts. In July 1978, began training in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. During our training, we learned everything about the space show. We also learned astronomy, first aid, parachuting, scuba diving, and how to do other astronauts' jobs. In April 1982, I was selected to go on a show flight that would launch in 1983. I went to space on June 18, 1983. We launched in Kennedy Space Air in Florida. Our space shuttle was called the Challenger. We launched at 7.33 a.m. and eight and a half minutes later, I officially became the first American woman in our space. Our mission was to launch satellites and do other experiments. We, we were in space in six days. When I, got, when I got back home, I realized just how important it was that I was the first American woman to go to space. Women all across the country were inspired that I did a job that only men had done before. My, my name is Malal Yousafzai and I was born in Mangor, Pakistan in 1997. I decided to be a doctor when I grew up. I knew I would need to study very hard, but I did not care. I liked studying everything, especially in religion. When I was 10, a fighting group called the Taliban took over Mangor, Pakistan and started war. They, they wanted to stop girls from going to school, but not boys. They, um, they, that the Taliban started destroying girls' schools. My home became a very dangerous became a very dangerous place. But I continued to go to school and spoke out. I told local newspapers that I was afraid my school would close. I started to become famous, and some of the Taliban even learned my name and were desperate to get revenge. I in in 2009 I wrote a blog, but I had to use a fake name so I or else I could get hurt. So I called it. Um, diary of a Pakistan school girl on the BBC website. I believed in school and education, so did my dad, Ziauddin. I continued to go to school, but in secret because because the Taliban could hurt me. So by so I did that by wearing a white headscarf instead of my school uniform. Women also wouldn't be able um t to vote, and all screens would be burned. That um the Taliban were breaking into homes. In 2007, the Pakistan army arrived to stop the Taliban. By 2008, more than 150 girls' schools were destroyed. The eventually, the Taliban ordered that all girls' schools would be closed. I gave a speech on September 8th called, How Dare the Taliban Take Away My Basic Right to Education? Newspapers all over Pakistan printed my words. Eventually, the fighting got so bad, me and my family had to leave our home. On July 24th, my, fi my family finally returned. I thought I didn't need to worry about the Taliban anymore. Um, in, in, in 2011, I won the National Youth Peace Prize from, from, from the Prime Minister of, of, of Pakistan. In October... Um, in October of 2012, I was on a school bus with my friends when suddenly a man with a gun hopped on the bus and, and said, Who was Malala? When he, fit, when he realized who I was, he shot me in the head. Um, they had to send me to a special hospital in England, which was 4,000 miles from my home. Um, it, it took me months of therapy for me to recover. A month later, on November 12th, the Security General, um, the Secretary General of the United Nations, declared my next birthday would be called 
would become Malala Day at the United Nations. In 2013, I went to New York State to speak to the United Nations Youth Assembly. I wanted to show the world that a terrorist with a gun would not stop me from speaking out for my rights. I, um, I, I, I said, I said Malala Day wasn't my day. It was day for every, for, for, um, for, for every, for every girl, boy, and woman who, 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 um, who, who have spoke up for their rights. Uh, copies were still, um, 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 three months later, a, bu a book I wrote called I Am Malala got published. Copies were sold all over the world. On October 10th, 2014, I was announced the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. The prize is for people who make the world a better place. I used half the money from my prize for the Malala Fund, for the Malala Fund which, helps, which helps kids all over the world receive an education. Oh, hello. My name is Anne Frank. I kept a diary for three years that I named Kitty while my family and I hid in the secret annex, which was a hidden room in the back of my father's work. We were hiding because the Nazis were after us. The Nazis were government in Germany and started they, start, they started World War II and were killing all people who were Jewish and different. I, my family, and most of my friends were Jewish. The Nazis eventually found us, and not only us, but every, Ju but every Jewish person the Nazis could find, and they murdered them. One, one million, one hundred thousand people were murdered by the Nazis. My diary kitty helps tell my story. And imagine each speck of sand is a person, and this is half of the people who were murdered by the Nazis because, because who they were, because they were different, because they were Jewish, because they were who they were. I was born in Germany in 1929. The Nazis took over the government in 1933. That's when it got hard for the Jewish people and the people who were different. The Nazis blamed us for all of Germany's problems. My family moved to Amsterdam in, in 1934 to get away from the Nazis. In 1939, the Nazis started World War II and came to Amsterdam and many, many other countries. The Nazis were sending Jewish people to labor camps that were really death camps. My family couldn't escape because my grandma was sick and we didn't have a car. So the only choice left was to hide in a secret room behind my father's work. Food and space were limited and we had to be quiet as baby mice so no one could find us. This was hard for me because I was known as a chatterbox. We lived in the annex for two years and I wrote about living there and my life in my diary. I got the diary for my 13th birthday, which was right before we went into hiding. My diary helped me pass the time and gave me a place to write my hopes and dreams. But none of them happened because in 1944, the Nazis found us and sent us to the camps. My sister Margot, my, mo my mother Edith, and I all died in 1945, which was right before World War II ended. I was only 15 at that time. Only my father Otto survived. He found my diary and made one wish survive too. That wish was making my diary into a book. Through my diary, I got to share my story with people around the world. My diary is a reminder of racism and the dangers of hatefulness. I will ask you to please remember my name. My name is Anne Frank. I am Sonia Sotomayor. I was born on June 25th, 1954. When I was three, my brother Juan was born. We moved to a nicer apartment in the Bronx. We moved to a nicer apartment in the Bronx. I like my new home, but miss my grandma. A few years later, I started writing a book called My Beloved World. It was published in 2013. My, my neighborhood had become dangerous. 
So my family moved to a safer place in Bronx, where I met, started ninth grade at Spelman High School. I had a boyfriend named Kevin Noonan. He, he was very smart and interesting. With so little money, I wasn't sure how to get into college. One day, one of my friends, Ken, called. He was now at Princeton University. Ken gave me some advice. Try for the IV League, he said. I decided to take Ken's advice. I applied to all three Ivy League schools, Hartford, Yale, and Princeton. At Princeton, many of the students came from rich families. Most of the people I met there were interested in politics and justice. I sent a complaint to the president of Princeton. I wrote that Princeton was unfair to minorities. It worked. After that, Princeton hired a Hispanic person for a very important job. In June 1976, I graduated from Princeton. Kevin and I got married on August 14th in New York City. After the wedding, we moved to New Haven, Connecticut. I got a job as bouncer in a campus spot. As a bouncer, I had to make sure everyone followed the rules. In October 1998, me and other students were invited to have dinner with lawyers from a big law firm in Washington, D.C., but the dinner didn't go so well. The man sitting across from me said that law firms shouldn't have hire affirmative action students. Why? Because they just end up firing them. I was shocked. The man actually said that in my face. When I started working, I lost my first case, but I didn't let that stop me. As I was trying to achieve my goals, becoming a judge, the older lawyers gave me advice to achieve my goal. The process took almost two years. After I did lots of hard work, Finally, in 1992, President George H.W. Bush named me as a federal judge, and Congress approved me. It was a dream come true. Best of all, I could stay in this job forever. Life was good for me. I loved my friends and work. On October 1998, the sentence voted in favor of me. In November 6, there was a swearing-in ceremony for me to be on the Supreme Court. Welcome to Ancient Egypt. My name is King Tut. I was an Egyptian pharaoh for 16 years. I became pharaoh when I was two and ruled 3,000 years ago. In 1922, Howard Carter found my tomb. Inside it were relics that helped the world know about ancient Egypt. This is a, this is a carving of the, a god named Bast. Bast was believed to be the protector of homes and families. People have kept cats for over 5,000 years. When Howard Carter found my tomb, with it was me and two smaller mummies. Scientists think they were my kids. I was married to my sister at the age of 10. When I died, my body parts were preserved in special bottles. Even though I only lived to be 18 and did not have time to change the world myself, the discovery of my tomb led to big increases in the knowledge in the subjects of ancient Egypt. It led, I mean, and to this day people are still discovering new tombs. Uh, my name is Harriet Tubman. I helped free many slaves and I was a nurse during the Civil War. I was courageous, I was strong, I was devoted to the freedom of my people. Because I led so many people, um, so many to, f many to freedom, some people call me Moses. I was born in Maryland in 1820 or 1821. Everyone thought the birth of a a slave wasn't worth remembering. Um, my mother was named Harriet Ross and my father's was Ben. They were born slaves. Slavery was common in the U.S. at the time. I lived in a slave cabin. Slave cabins did not have floors or windows. When I was six, I was hired out, so I did not get to see my family. I worked for a weaver. I washed a baby. I, and I watch a baby. And if I did a bad job, I would be whipped. 
One time I tried a sugar and my owner was furious. I ran away for five days and I stayed in a pig pen. <laughs> After I became a field worker, that's when I heard about freedom. I helped a run away, but someone threw a two pound, um, a two pound weight at my head. I and gave me a score. My father taught me how to find the North Star. This is important because North was where slaves were free. He also taught me that Tommy Moss grew facing the facing North. When I was 23, I fell in love with John Tumman. He was a free man, but I was not. I wanted to go north, but John did not. In 1849, I was going to be sold, but instead, but instead I ran away alone. My trip was long and was a series of houses and stops. It later, it later became known as the Underground Railroad. I finally ended in Pennsylvania, and I was free. I lived and worked in Pennsylvania, but my friends and family were in Maryland. Um, my sister and her family were the first family I saved. Um, saving slaves was dangerous. There were slave hunters and a $40,000 reward for me. In 1861, the Civil War began. North wanted no slaves, well, South did. I helped te to teach the northern slaves um, in the army how to be free. Then I became a nurse. In 1863, President Lincoln freed slaves, and in 1865, slavery was abolished. I died in, um, six, in 1913. I was a conductor of the Underground Railroad and um, for eight years. I can say what most conductors cannot say. I never, I can say, I never ran my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. Hello, my name is Sacagawea. I'm best known for helping Lewis and Clark on their expedition. I was born in 1790 or 1789. I was born to Shoshone Indians. My tribe often camped near Snake River, so we were also called Snake Indians. My name meant bird woman. Saka meant bird, and Leah means woman. I also had a brother named Gamaawe. I had two other siblings. The Shoshone did not have school, so I learned from older women. When I was 10 or 11, military Indians attacked with guns. We only had bows and arrows. 15 people died, and when I was fleeing, I got kidnapped. I was given to a military family in North Dakota. I was a prisoner. One day, the fur trader came. He saw me and went to me as his wife. His name was Toussaint Charbonneau. It wasn't long before Charbonneau heard news. President Thomas Jefferson planned an expedition to head to the Pacific Ocean. He picked 29-year-old Meriwether Lewis for captain, and Lewis picked 33-year-old William Clark as co-captain. Clark's first job for the expedition was to gather men. Clark gathered 43 men. Lewis and Clark were also looking for one more person. They needed a Shoshone Indian, so Charbonneau volunteered for the job. Around that time, I expected a baby. Then Charbonneau brought me to meet Lewis and Clark. The captains wanted us for the expedition. They agreed to pay us $500. It was a fortune. We moved to the cabin Lewis and Clark had made. On February 11, 1805, I, ex I was going to have my baby. I was only 15. To hurry along the baby, I ate powder made from a rattlesnake's tail. Ten minutes later, I gave birth to a help, healthy baby boy. We named him Jean Baptiste. Clark called the baby Pomp. On April 7th, we started the expedition. We rowed up the Missouri River in six small boats. I often found food on the shore. I found some tasty artichokes. 
Five weeks later, it was very foggy. Suddenly, wind knocked down our boat. Sharpenow cried out he couldn't swim. I managed to catch all of the supplies with pomp on my back. Rain and snow made traveling difficult, but there was enough deer and buffalo to hunt. We stored the meat in our boat. Hardly a day passed without very bad problems. Me and Clark nearly got bitten by rattlesnakes. Mosquitoes stung a lot of us. Pomp's body was a mass of red sores. I began to have a fever. I was out of my senses. I got better around June 24th. Then storms hit. There was a flood while I, while I was walking along a dry creek bed. Luckily, I survived. Hailstones hit. They were huge. They bounced high. A morning uh, of the, on the morning of August 13, Lewis and a few other people saw three Shoshone Indians. They expected to be killed, but Lewis was nice. So the Indians took him to meet the chief. Meanwhile, Clark saw some Indians. I started dancing and sucking my finger, fingers to show that those were my people. I found my best friend. She took me to the chief. He was Kamiawe. We talked for a while. Then I asked for horses to help cross the Bitterroot Mountains. A few days later, I overheard my own brother saying that he wasn't going to give us the horses. I told Lewis. Lewis confronted Kamiawe. The chief was ashamed. He kept his word after all. In late August, I said farewell to my family. Now we started cr to cross the Bitterroot. Crossing the Bitter Ridge was very slippery. The food source was so weak, Clark named the river Hungry Creek. I was still nursing my baby, so I needed food badly. So we killed a few of our horses. The mountain crossing lasted until late September. We met many Nez Perce Indians. We traveled, we traded many things for food. Clark had too much food. He wrote, I am very sick today and puke, which relives me. As we neared the Pacific, rain fell. Huge logs nearly crashed our boats. On November 7th, we could smell the ocean. I had come 2,020 miles for the site. One evening in late November, a Chinook Indian chief visited. He had a otter skin coat. Lewis wanted it. Lewis tried to get the coat by giving the chief four blankets, but the chief said no. While they argued over a coat, the, the chief spotted my precious belt made of beads. He wanted it. In the end, I got forced to hand it over. Lewis got the coat. He gave me a blue coat to make me feel better, but my treasure was gone. The Columbia River has two sides. One was the one I was on. The other was the farther side. We had a vote. All the men and me voted to go to the other side. There the men could hunt elk and deer. I said that there was a tasty root. Near present day Austria, Oregon, we built our cabins. We called it Fort Clacto because the Clacto Indians lived nearby. Around the New Year of 1806, the captains heard about a whale that had washed up shore. They could get oil and blubber, which tastes like meat. No one thought of including me. I told Clark that I had traveled a long way to see, uh, see the waters, and now that you are going to see them, I think it is very hard I can't go. So ca Captain Clark took me to see the whale. Palm's birthday fell on February 11, 1806. By then, he was taking a few steps and had learned to say a few words. Clark loved the child. He would hold Palm before he went to bed and sing to him. On March 22, 1806, Lewis and Clark gave the fort to the Clatsop Indian chief. The next afternoon, we started our journey to St. Louis. I found plans to help the ill. We'd given our ponies to the Nisprace Indians, so we took them back to cross the Bitterroot Mountains. We split up to cross the Bitterroot. Me and Sharp and Owen Pomp stayed with Clark. We met with Lewis's group 
on August 12th. We met near Montana, North Dakota border, then we floated to Missouri. The captains paid Charbonneau 533 cents. It was, it was time for the family to say goodbye to Lewis and Clark. The corpse of Discovery glided back to St. Louis. The Americans assumed that they were dead. The men were heroes. A few months later, Clark wrote a letter. He asked if I could move to St. Louis. We eventually moved to St. Louis and we lived on a farm, but Charbonneau grew restless. He took me on a fur trading trip up the Missouri River. Pomp lived with Clark and his wife, Julia. I died on 1812 just after giving birth to a daughter named Listy. Clark took this took Listy too. Pomp became a well-known Western guide and trader. Later, he became a mayor of a Spanish town in California. What became of Listy is not known. My name is Isaac Newton. You may know me as the discoverer of gravity. I was born in Lincolnshire, England on Christmas Day, 1641. I was born too early. I was so weak and tiny that I could fit into a court mug. No one thought I could live. When I was older, I went to the local village school. I seemed unusually intelligent, so Hannah, my mother, decided to send me to a better school. The King's School was seven miles away, too far to walk, so I lived with the Clark family in town. The uh, family later said that while I lived there, I fell in love with the Clark's daughter, Catherine. If this is true, she was the only girlfriend I ever had. Years later, Catherine remembered me as a so sober, silent thinking lad who was never known to play with the boys at their silly amusements. In my spare time, I built doll furniture for Catherine. Clark, Catherine's father, was an apothecary. An apothecary is someone who makes medicine by combining herbs and chemicals. This involved careful work with weights and measures, as well as knowing what was special about different substances. I was fascinated. By watching and sometimes helping Clark, I began to learn basic chemistry, how different things interact with each other. I even made my own potions, such as a medicine made up of sac, which is a type of wine, turpentine, rose water, bee wax, o olive oil, and red sandalwood. This was supposed to protect me from a deadly disease called tuberculosis. I was also interested in time. The clocks of my the clocks of my time weren't very reliable, and I thought I could do a more accurate job. I made a sundial by hammering pegs to a wall. Sometimes when people wanted to know the actual time, they'd check my clock. For knowing the actual time indoors, I created a clock with a wooden dial turned by the regular dripping of water. I also designed a small windmill with a mouse to control it. Unfortunately, the subjects at school didn't interest me. I never studied and I was the worst in my class. One day, a boy kicked me in, a, in the stomach. I challenged him to a fight and to everyone's surprise, I defeated him. I was great at holding a grudge, only winning the fight wasn't good enough for me. I, after this fight, my ac academic stats got higher. Still, I was not thought of, a smart, as, of as a smart student. My teacher thought I was cunning and crafty, but not clever. When I was 16, my mother pulled me out of school to work on the farm. I did not do a good job as a, as a farmer. I always didn't watch the animals. After a few months, my teacher, Mr. Stokes, convinced my mother to let me finish school so I could go to university. When I enrolled at Trinity College, I made a list about what I wanted to learn. Here's part of the list. Sleep, soul, 
tides, motion, time, matter, sun, stars, planets, and comets. Four years later, after I got into college, I had to leave. Fleas on rats spread the, the plog, plague in, and everyone had to stay home. The death year for England became the fantastic year for me. I discovered gravity. I was sitting under an apple tree thinking, then an apple fell. <laughs> That sparked an explosion of questions in my head. Why didn't the apple go up or sideways? I came up with the answer, gravity. Is this, then I thought, is this the same force that is making the Earth orbit, the moon orbit Earth and that makes the planets or orbit our sun? As you all probably know, the answer is yes. My miracle year included more accomplishments. Then a fire broke out in a bakery. It spread over across England for four days and four nights. After those four days and nights, the wind stopped and the fire died down. There was one good thing. The fleas that carried the plague were killed. The plague was over. Six months later, I returned to college. I finished college and became a professor at, on mathematics. I made a telescope that was unlike telescopes of my time. I do donated to the Royal Society, a group of people who, who t talk about science. In return, they, I became a member. A few years, years later, I, I published a book about planet orbit. My book made me so famous that I was elected to the parliament. In 1696, I asked some old friends to help me find a new job. They got me to run the Royal Mint. The Mint created all of England's coins. I lived to become an old man. In 1705, I was knighted by Queen Anne. I became Sir Isaac Newton. It was as uh, it was if other scholars had had written interesting things, but I figured out the way in all these sentences could be put together to tell the how this the story of how the universe worked. I'm a professional soccer player from from Brits. Still, and I was born October 23, 1940, in the tiny village of Tres Cortesois. My full name is Edson Arantes do Nascimento. I was named after the famous inventor Thomas Edison in honor of our village getting electricity. My father's name was Zal Ramos, and his nickname was Don Dinho and he was a soccer player for the town's team, and my, fam my family spoke Portuguese, and my family had ancestors from African slaves that were brought to Brazil. My dad did not make a lot of money while playing soccer for Trace Cotasois, and I got my first pair of ever suits when I was seven. When I moved to Peru when I was four. I played soccer with, with the neighborhood Boys, and I used an old sock stuffed with rags, and I forgot to get that out of my backpack. I made one. I love spending time practicing soccer with my f dad. At 10, I formed a team called September 7th, named after Brazil's Independence Day. We changed our name to the shoeless ones because we didn't have shoe because we had no cleats. We wanted to play in the tournament, but the players had to have shoes. My dad's of the three players bought the team team cleats, and we changed our name to again to Americano, which stands which stands for Little America. We won all our games, including the finals. I was invited to, to play on the Baru Junior team, and I worked with Coach Waldemar Debrito. Debrito taught 
me the famous bicycle kick that I mastered later. In 1955, Debrito joined the Santos Football Club and took me with him. I missed my family and worried I wouldn't be able to play with the older, bigger players. On September 7, 1956, I scored my first officially goal for Santos. By, in, by 1957, I was a regular member of, of the Santos senior team. At 17, I was the youngest player and top scorer. In 1958, people were looking forward to the World Cup and wanted to know who would make it on the team. I was one of them. I, before heading to Sweden for the World Cup, I hurt my knee in a warm-up game. I had to miss the first two games in the World Cup for Brazil. In the, in the first game I played, I didn't score, but, but in the next, I scored a goal, and that caused Brazil to enter the semifinals. We won the semifinals and the finals to become a world champion. I returned to Brazil as a hero. I kept on playing soccer for Santos and won more championship games. In the 1962 World Cup, I got injured in the second game for Brazil. I won the World Cup. In 1965, I, I married Rosemary Zolby. We had a, a, a daughter in 1967, and we also visited Amer America. The biggest crowds came to see me. In 1969, I scored my 1,000th goal. In 1970, I won, I, I won another World Cup, and I was the first player to win three World Cups ever. Um, it's the same year we had our, our son, and my son's nickname was Ed Dinho. In 1971, I retired from, from the national team and kept playing for Santos, and I fought for fair wages. And, and, and I taught kids soccer clinics before I retired. Before I reach, wait, no. Since so soccer clinics, I don't get why it says retired there. And I retired from Santos in 1974. In 1975, I went to America to play for the New York Cosmos. I contributed the popularity of soccer in the U.S. and became a, a United Nations goodwill amb ambassador. I became the Minister of Sports for Brazil, for Brazil in 1995. I worked to make rules that treated soccer players more fairly. I, I, I continued to, to raise money for charity and, and, and and encourage kids to play soccer. I am an international superstar and, and, the, and the best player, soccer player in the world. Hi, my name is Abraham Lincoln. I was born on February 12, 1809 in Kentucky. My family was poor. When I was seven, my family moved from Kentucky to Indiana because Kentucky was a slave state and Indiana was a free state. Eventually, we ended up on a small farm in, in Illinois. When I was nine years old, my mother died, so my father married a new wife. She brought books for me to read. At 21, I left home. I stayed with Flatboats, owned a store, then helped people with legal advice. I ran the Illinois State Legislature. I lost the first time, I won the second time. In 1837, I moved to Springfield. I met Mary Todd at a party. I married, I married Mary Todd. Nine months after the marriage, children began being born. In 1846, I was elected as a representative from Illinois. In 1854, I was interested in politics because of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. The Kansas-Nebraska Act was when Kansas and Nebraska chose to have slavery or not. I hated it, so I ran for Senate. In 1858, seven debates were held. They were all about slavery. I lost the Senate election again. 
In 1860, I became president. In 1861, soldiers fired on Union soldiers. The Civil War has begun. General George B. McClellan was chosen as general for the Union soldiers. The Union fought against the Confederate states who elected Jefferson Davis as their president. I wrote the Emancipation Proclamation. In 1863, slaves in the South escaped and went north. I found Ulysses S. Grant to lead his army. In 1863, I called for a draft. I spoke to the Gettysburg. I spoke at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The speech was called the Gettysburg Address. In 1864, my first term as president was ending. In 1865, March 25th, Grant's army captured Richmond. In April 9th, Grant, General Robert Lee and the Confederate Army surrendered. I was killed in a theater from a gunshot by John Wilkes Booth. I appear on the $5 bill and the penny. I have a monument in the nation's capital, and my face is carved on Mount Rushmore. I am also one of the greatest presidents ever.